Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. We got another interesting video here. This is a 1992 Dodge Steel front wheel drive. And it has, uh, let me see, I think it's a three point something engine. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, just say here, so it's a 3.0 V6. And the customer complaint is it has a hard idle. That's his description, so it's a very rough idle. And one thing that I'm noticed, uh, I have the scanner connected with the, this is an OVD1 vehicle. So I want you guys to focus on, uh, look at the coolant temperature. It goes from like 192 to 160. I mean, it's all over the place, 206. So definitely, you know, with those kind of readings, the car will be crazy adjusting, you know, the mixture. But so is the battery. Look at the battery voltage on the computer. It's all over the place as well. I have a tester, you know, the Mitronic tester connected to the battery. We can see some, you know, differences, but not as big as in the scanner. This is a 14.0, 13.9, you know, so it's pretty steady on 14. And uh, here we go from, I have seen even like 12.4, as you can see 14.5. 13 point you know something 12 so it's all over the place same thing as the biomedic pressure air temperature sensor the crank signal well that's the rpms injection is changing because you know we have a difference on the temperature of the cooling uh, it has a EGR temperature sensor uh, hope I mean that's at least a pit but my main concern is we have you know uh, values that are going up and down and up and down Another thing that I noticed, uh, let me see if I can reproduce this, uh, I have to hold my microphone with one hand only. So hopefully you guys can hear that. Let me actually, I'm going to focus the, the microphone on the angle. So when you accelerate the car, hear that? That's the starter grinding on the flywheel. Okay, that's the started grinding on the flywheel. And uh, so we have that uh, differences on, t on values. I uh, have actually right now some negative values on the EGR temperature. I don't know if that is just a substituted value that the computer is showing or, or what. So let me get some more information on this vehicle and see what to do next. Okay, so I also wanted to show you guys that at least the alternator is keeping up, you know, with the voltage and also with the uh, amperage. We got, you know, that's not the main cable, but it's, that is the positive cable going into everything. I'm sorry for that. I'm going to raise up. Put some, you guys can see better. I don't like that. Uh, sound too much place is better because it's not reading completely so so we got 40 amps 40 amps the same and 40 it's nothing wrong with this alternator battery is good it's maintaining the voltage also you know on the battery so car is starting good but we have that noise on the starter I don't like that uh, the issue that we have on 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 the voltage on and, and all the pockets on the computer it's not just you know when that alter I mean with that started is engaging so I'm really f going to focus myself onto that computer this is a Mitsubishi uh, vehicle just rebranded by Dodge outside and those computers are well known to have an issues you know with like uh, Saturday inside and so so I'm going to check powers and grounds and and so on to see if I find anything else that can be the copyright. Uh, definitely going to replace the starter. But uh, this is a very interesting uh, problem on the car too. So I'm going to stop the video and uh, I'm going to proceed to find a computer and check that. I will show you guys where it's located and the test as well. All right, guys, back with the car. Uh, so what I did is I really removed the panels on the side. So. Well, the computer, the PCM is in the center console, behind the center console. I have the computer right there on the floor, as you guys can see. That one that says 9963. So the computer lies or leaves uh, right here. 
So you have to remove two bolts in here. It's also important that you remove this uh, wiring in here. So it will give you better room for that. Do the same in the other side. The panels in here, they just hold by one Phillips screw that you remove the screw and then put your hand underneath and pop out the clips on the back and it's one clip on the front as well. So that's what I did with the computer. So in order to gain information, because uh, I went over to Identifix and I couldn't find anything. So luckily for me, I have uh, also Mitchell and I have also uh, all data, but I sometimes prefer to have Mitchell. So, well, the computer wire diagram is really not that good. Uh, it's just a black and white, it's a, it's a 92 vehicle. But I was able to find all the pinouts for the computer, which is very important because the descriptions are not in there. So I have all those, uh, this is a double overhead cam engine. So these are the connector pins out and also, so I think, uh, let me show you how I find this just in case you also have a um, Mitchell, you will find it. So I just went PCM and I did a full search and then pin voltage charts. So that's also very important. You also have uh, the sensor range charts probably the same thing let me see see this car you know this is a, a Mitsubishi 3000 GT this is a, they rename it for Dodge as a Dodge still but this is that's what this this car is so let me see right here well this is kind of important too we got the TPS terminals and oxygen sensors and let me see if I have intake EGR so we do have an EGR temperature sensor all right so I will be probably trying to tap into those uh, we have the coolant temperature sensor this is also very important that's probably the one I'm going to use for the diagnosis uh, at least to see that you know everything is as it should let me show also how you can do a, a, a print you know like a, a picture of the screen that you're uh, seeing on, at least on Windows 7 you go to a star and in here you will put a snipping so right here we'll go to a snipping tool that will open this dialog in here so all you got to do is click on full screen and that takes a picture of your screen so what you got to do uh, that's how I do it I just close it select yes yeah, that's gonna ask you where you wanna save this as and then okay it's being saved in the desktop and I'm going to rename it as a uh, so ECT engine coolant temperature uh, sensor value values for uh, sorry 92 still so that's going to save all the information that I need so I don't have to go back and forth. I'm gonna uh, just minimize this. And I have the information in here. So we have uh, <coughs> the connection uh, pinout numbers in here. Sometimes I like to have the Mac for this. Mac you can do zoom. Oh, I can, you can do it here, so okay perfect that's better so we can see all the pinout numbers all the connector numbers on the computer and then I went uh, and uh, it's just not closing. okay right here so we got the pinout the first ones this is gonna give me the values for the sensors I mean for the, the full screen so we know by here so let me see Power supply for the computer is in uh, first of the connection connectors. It's going to be a, a black and red, <coughs> so we're going to have to look for that into into the computer. Go back to that one with the computer pinouts. Uh, no, that's the same one. This one. So again, let me do a little bit of a zoom more. Okay, so they're neat. They're oh, that's kind of weird. So one through twenty-six, then fifty-one to seventy-two, and one hundred to one hundred and sixteen. So we have to go to pin twelve. So it should be this one is a 
black and a red. So let's go back to the other, to the pinout shark. Come on. All right, so right here. So, okay, it is a black and red, so information at least is, it is correct. Sometimes, and that's what I wanted to double check. So in the next chart, we have also a power supply on the pin 25. It's supposed to be on key on, engine off. So we have to check that one too. We got the ground circuit, so pin 26 is gonna be also important to check. Um, in the ignition supply, we have another one in here. That will be with ignition on. Key on engine on too. So that will be pin 62. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down so I don't miss anything, at least in a piece of paper, what I need to check. And I'm going to go back uh, to the computer with a, uh, a tester, a digital bolt meter, and also going to have a, a test slide that I made myself with like a halogen bulb so we can, you know, like load test those powers and those rounds. Okay, so let me set up everything and, I, and, and I'll be back with the video. The information I need, I set up the laptop inside so I can double check, make sure everything I'm doing is correct. Let me put the microphone in there so you guys can hear me well. Uh, so these are the pins that we need to check so I don't have to go back and forth into the diagram too much except for see which connector is the right one. So 12, 13, 25, 26 and so on, right? I rigged myself also how they 20 foot extension straight from the battery so I got a good source of power and ground for this testing so okay I got the voltmeter ready to as well uh, not just in case I know which one is better I got in there sorry guys I'm gonna have to move this through the wires okay we're free now okay so what I did is I got the negative uh, lead of the uh, DVM to the uh, ground part of that uh, 20 foot extension cord that I got coming from the battery so I know I, I got a, a very good uh, ground and power in there so I'm gonna check the power so it says uh, so pin 12 should be you have to look for a one that has 26, the other one should be from 51 to 70 to 20, 21, and the other one is a small one, so it should be the biggest, the bigger one of all. So, okay, so looking at this will be, sorry, looking at this, so we, we have this one in here, that's the one that has more wires. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, that is annoying, I put this key up, or at least, do I get the by wiring or know which one is one and two and the way this wire connector looks it looks like a, a little not a straight You can see into the pins inside the computer from here. <laughs> All right, so well, let's focus on what we're doing. So we're looking for pin 12. So pin 12, I uh, should have. Our pin 12 is something is black and red. Yeah, black and red. So we will be looking for a black and a brown and a red right next to that one. I didn't open this. All right, guys, uh, I found the pins that I need for the computer. So pin 12 and pin 13, there should be black, black and red. I also went and, you know, let me show you on here. Uh, go back to the pin now. So in the pin now on the computer, pin number one is a green and a green yellow. It should be the first one. So if we look, if we look close in here, this is a green and this is a green yellow one. So 13 pins, uh, 13 pins on this side and 13 pins on the other side. So 12 and 13 are these two. So the, the ground is reading good. There's no difference on, on the ground. Actually, what I'm checking is, uh, is I got now the lead connected to power. 
and then and ground in there I'm going to put ground to ground to see the voltage drop as you can see it's four millivolts so that's a perfect ground as far as voltage drop I'm still gonna load test it with the test light that I tell you uh, let me go back now to the power side which is a uh, pin number 12 as you can see we get 14 volts that's exactly what the battery is showing I want to go onto the data to see what the voltage is right now on the computer so as you can see it goes from 13.77 to 14 something 14 and a half I mean it's all over the place as you can see and we don't have that in there so I mean the voltage is really really steady same thing that we saw on the battery before so this more and more is telling me that we definitely do have a problem with the computer Look at that uh, EGR temperature, it goes from minus 100 to positive 50. Coolant temperature sensor, 185, 165, 192, I mean it's all over the place. So let me just do a load test on this uh, power and ground, at least on this two that we have right now here. Uh, for this I'm going to need, uh, hold on one second guys. Alright guys, I set up a small tripod in here. Hopefully the light is helping us in here. So what I'm going to use is uh, I made this test light. This is going to draw 4.2 amps. I have one leg of this one set up again onto the ground side of that uh, uh, 20 foot extension that I got coming from the battery. And I'm now going to connect the other side to that uh, power supply that we have in the computer. That's a black and red pin 12. Uh, yeah, pin 12, so the ignition is on. So we know that we have a good power. All right, so now let's test the ground. So I'm going to move this one over to the ground and then switch this one to power. And now let's touch the other one. Okay. All right, so we got a good ground. This is a very bright, very good light. So we got a good power and a good ground, at least on on that uh, 12 and 13 so I'm going to move now to power I mean to 25 and 26 those are still on the same connectors I mean on the same connector that should be see the color of those 25 and 26 should be black and red and black so that should be the other side So these two that we have here now this is the other side of the, of the computer so hopefully you guys are seeing me well so this is going to be our power here oh we're going to set up for that doesn't matter make sure that thing is in to what we need it so we got a good uh less power so let's switch this leg to ground and let's touch this one so this should be okay we have a very good steady power now let's check that ground switch into power and let me get that one okay here now I'm checking the power on the ground I mean the, the ground side and we got a good ground so again now 25 and 26 they're also very good I got two more left which will be 62 and 6 I mean in 108 the 62 is an ignition let me go to the pinout on the computer I know you guys are not seeing this, but I need to make sure. So 62, it's a black and white. It's a battery voltage key on and in and off. So let me turn the ignition off because this battery is, it's an old car. This battery, they don't hold that much of a charge. So let me look for pin 62, white, red. Sorry, black, white. So 62, it should be on our... Let me see also on the other one. This is what I'm looking at guys right now here. So uh, I need to see which one is the connector that holds 62. So there's a center one. 
So that should be our center connector. And that starts on 51, so 62 should be 11, 11 pins down. 11. This is 11 and 11, so let me see, this is a 21 or 22 pins. From 51 to 72, that should be 21 pins. I bet you there's a 22 pin, but one is missing, so let me see that. I'm looking for a black and white. In 62, black and white. There's actually two black and whites in there. That's going to be confusing. Let me see that. So, okay. In 62, there's a black and white right next to a green yellow. Okay, let me see. Green yellow. Black and white. I don't see any black and white in here. Second, guys. No, it's not the center pin. I, I, I want to see the center one. It's not the center one. It's this one. This is the one that has less pin. So, so black and white. Okay, we have right next to a green yellow. So we have two black and whites in here. Brown, brown with a red. Let's see that. Brown and a red. So what we're looking at is on the other side of the pin out. Probably that green yellow is on the other side. So it should be white, green, yellow. So black and white, black and white, yeah, green, yellow. Yeah, we had a green yellow right here so yes so these are our two black and whites and by looking at here so if that is correct that will be our first pin because then the black and white actually hold on one second no black and white black, yeah so our second black and white is something else i don't know let me see what pin 63 is Pin 63 says that it's a, also a black and white. That's a coolant temperature sensor. Okay. So we know that by looking at this, our pin that we need to check for power, it will be this one, the first one. There. This is easy in here. So that is a power side. So we need that one. Again. The slide uh, ignition is not on, so let me set it on. And we got a good ignition source, so, so we got all the ignitions, the two grounds that I have seen, you know, so far in there. And let me check that uh, order wire that I have here is supposed to be 108. 108 is a blue green with ignition off, so I can set up the ignition off. So with the ignition off, we have we're supposed to have battery voltage in there, and that is a blue green. I'll take this out of here. So it's pin 108. We go back to the pin outs on the computer. So 108. This is from 101 to 116. So eight pins on each side. And the pink color is blue green. Sorry. Yeah, blue green. Pink 108 and pink 108 blue green is next to a blue white. So blue green and blue white. green and blue white these are my two cables right here so these two right here are the ones I need 
so I need the one with the blue green that's our pin 108 so blue green should be this one and that should have power with the ignition off hmm. I can hear the relay activating so that's the main relay so it just says M main relay let me go back to that pin now because I just read that in there I'm not sure about 108 108 says MPI relay supply voltage battery voltage MPI relay supply voltage battery voltage with ignition off ignition is off connect it to ground let's check with the tester what we have here so okay, ground connect it to here and then we'll read what we have here so we got battery voltage we do just, just activate him. Let me show you that, guys. I'm sorry for the weird angle. So we got 11.76, which is right now at a battery voltage again. You know, with the car off, it's very low battery. But so we have a steady voltage in there. My question will be why it's not energizing this one. Ignition off, but I can see, I can hear that. Uh, Relay being activated. Let me do that again. So, this one going to ground. And we have Stop the uh, video one second to see where that relay is. All right, guys, looking more into the wire diagram in the computer. The reason we're just looking at power in there and not really, you know, able to light up anything is because that is actually the control side of the uh, MPI relay. So you can see it has actually two relays built into one. We have uh, what we're looking at. We have a fuse one pin 10 on the MPI relay should have power but that's you know some other source if this is not working the pump will not be working so we have another let me see this red this red is supplying just so to check the MPI so that red should be coming from the power of here so when this closes we should have power on the red and that is supplying power to the fuel injector so the card is running for sure okay so the card is running we can check the power in one of the injectors if we decide to go that way which actually might as well do it it's very easy let me set up the camera one second guys well let me go and get the, the uh, multimeter for this
I hope that's coming out in there. Let me bring this camera a little low, a little low more. Over right there. All right, so I got the ground connected to that lead, the vector extension. And then two wires on the vectors. So we got a red, and then a green with a yellow, a green with a black, a red and a green. So the common wire in this case is a red, so that should be a power source. Ignition is on. And as you can see, we got 11.93. Hopefully that's showing up in there too. So that means the main relays is fine. So we got powers, we got grounds. We have a steady source of power on that computer. Everything is clean. And we have a very irrational up and down on values on the computer. So I am calling a computer. All right, so for this, this will be the part one of this video at least the testing and then as soon as I get the computer I will definitely sh uh, sh uh, shoot the video to the repair